Well, welcome to Fielding Primary School. This video is for uh, aimed for parents who are joining our school in our reception classes starting from September 20. Many of you will know us already, but for those who don't, a especially warm welcome. I'm Peter Dunmull, I'm head teacher, and I'm joined on the video by Claire Haynes, deputy head, and Christian Webb, who is an assistant head, uh, is our reception leader, and is also a class teacher. Christian is an, something of an early years expert and also provides consultancy and advises other schools around their own early years for nursery and reception. This year, there's um, a degree of congratulations for you if you've gained a place. Fielding offers 120 places shared equally across our four classes and four teachers. We received um, over 500 applications again this year, up slightly uh, on last year. And then the one that really matters for us is we were up again on first choice preferences with nearly 200 of you putting Fielding as your first choice school. We welcome 58 children uh, who are brothers and sisters of those already in the school. 83 of you join us from our nursery and down this year, uh, just two sets of twins. But congratulations on gaining that place. Those numbers mean that we had to apply distance criteria so that places were allocated fairly. And distance this year fell to just over 0.3 of a mile, uh, so just around that third of a mile from the school, um, so living very, very closely. And that's important to us because it gives a sense and a genuine sense of being part of a school community. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, some of you um, I've met before. You may have been uh, one of our early years tours for nursery or reception, either um, earlier on in this school year or previous school years. So some of the information that we're going to share with you this morning, um, you may have heard bits of before, but we, we will go into more detail because um, you now are part of our fielding community as one of our new parents. Um, so you might have heard us talk before about the high expectations that we have here at fielding, and they do start from um, the reception age group so from from your children and going all the way through to year six so we know that children from this area they come into school with um, higher than typical starting points so they may be able to do some things already that perhaps children in other parts of um, Ealing or even the country can't yet do so we, we work with that um, and it doesn't matter whether your child is coming in and particularly high so some come in at being able to read or to write or to count um, it may be that some children are coming in able to dress themselves or control um, the, you know the TV and, and uh, the, the different technology you have in your house particularly over the last few weeks um, but it might be that they can't do any of those things yet and that's okay because we know that children come in with many different starting points um, and what we aim to do is make sure that children have the opportunity here to get to what we call the um, age related expected um, um, place in their learning so um, we um, would compare them against their starting point to where they're getting to and other children so knowing that they will leave reception um, well placed for year one and that continues throughout the school so we know that we have um, a higher proportion than um, other schools um, in the UK for children to leave here with age-related expectations but also to be working at greater depth so we make sure that all of the children have the chance to be working um, at that stage. And we really important to us that we know that we have children that come from disadvantaged backgrounds. So that's um, that's a government definition, disadvantaged background. Um, but we know that we have children that come from disadvantaged backgrounds and they need um, the chance perhaps to catch up, um, to be able to learn with their peers um, and to enjoy um, this community. So we make sure that we improve the life chances of those children. And we have a, a growing number of children with um, special educational needs um, and children that perhaps had to have an edu education and health care plan and making sure that we um, we adjust what we do our teaching to meet the needs of all of those groups of children is really important to us um, just to make sure that we have those high expectations no matter what the starting point for those children are it's not just about high academic achievement though, because we also want your children to grow up to be the best person that they can possibly be. 
and that means we promote exemplary attitudes across the school right from when children first join us. We'll talk to you and we'll talk to children about our values-based ethos. We'll talk a language of values words like resilience, respect, hope, love, uh, tolerance. And that means that we together, we share our own moral and ethical compass. And it's from that compass that that guides children to make the decisions, not because they're an adult's breathing down their neck or about to tell them off, but they know that they then have to do the right thing because it is the right thing. Every adult treats every child with unconditional positive regard. And that means we have a fair system of rewards and sanctions for every pupil. So how, how do we do that? Um, how do we ensure that uh, we have those high expectations, that children get great outcomes, but also grow up to be the best person they could possibly be through our values-based education? Well, it doesn't happen by accident. Um, and that's it happens through the excellent teaching that we have here at Fielding, through our very skilled teaching team, um, which extends beyond the teachers. Um, it's um, particularly in reception, it will be our earliest specialists and our teaching assistants as well. Um, our teaching here at Fielding is, is research-based. We are a um, an accredited visible learning plus school so what that means is the children here have um, a, a really important part to play in their own learning it's not all about the teacher standing at the front of the classroom it's about every member of the class um, knowing what they're learning um, what what their goals are and how they're going to get there um, our children are incredibly re reflective learners and we teach them that right the way from nursery re reception all the way through to year six how to reflect on their own learning so they can set their own goals um, we have four classes in each year group so it's really important to us that actually the children in each class group class group um, receive the same standard of teaching so consistency across um, year groups and age groups um, is, is vital to make sure that the, the children um, have that uh, those high expectations of themselves, but also a high expectations um, by their teachers. Uh, in reception, the children knowing about their learning, that starts with what a character who you'll get to know over the, the next year, who's called Percy Progress. So Percy um, is a, a caterpillar and the children um, are set goals um, for their learning and the children are then able to reflect on their learning using Percy as a tool to move themselves along um, to until they get to um, a butterfly to know that they have achieved what they need to achieve um, in that piece of learning. And we do that for for reading uh, writing and we do that for maths and it's all about the children taking control of their own learning and knowing how well they are doing the excellent teaching at this school is based on our curriculum our, our curriculum sets out the knowledge and the skills that we want our children to learn and it's as broad as it possibly can be and within that breadth, we offer three specialisms. And these specialisms start from when your children join in reception. All through school, we will place a high emphasis on sport, including competitive sport, on music, and that includes then from year two, learning a musical instrument based on the knowledge that children have gained through whole class percussion in year one. And then from reception, uh, also starting to learn a modern foreign language. And for us, that's French, because the French are our closest European neighbours. And that means when your children reach year six, the culmination of learning French will be a residential trip to go and visit France. So that specialist teaching is there, complementing a broad and balanced curriculum. And then after school, we enrich that curriculum through uh, our childcare offer and specialist clubs. Okay, so that, that's sort of the broad brushstrokes really of, of fielding. Um, so now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty and, and talk to you about reception, what that's going to look like for your children. Um, so meet the reception team. So you can see we have four teachers. Um, at the moment it says teacher two, three and four. That's because we haven't quite got to the stage where we're assigning teachers to classes yet. You'll find out a little bit about that by the end of um, this month. But we have Mr. Webb, um, Christian Webb, our um, reception leader and assistant head teacher. Um, we have three other teachers and then we have a, a team of um, teaching assistants or earlier specialists that work alongside uh, the reception team. And then we also have our inclusion team who work across the whole school, which includes me, our um, special educational needs 
needs coordinator, Claire Chadwick, um, teaching assistants who are assigned children with education and healthcare plans. And then we also work closely with the therapists from the local authority um, to make sure that we're meeting the needs of the children in each year group. So I'm going to hand you over to Christian, who's going to tell you a little bit about um, what the reception year will look like for your child. Hi everyone. Um, so, so at Fielding, it's it's really important that we get the reception year right for your children. For for many of the children, it'll be their first time that they've got that extended day in school. Um, so for that, our aims for your child for the year is that, of course, that we teach them the skills, those early skills of, of mathematics and to be able to read and write, but also that they come into school and they're happy, they're confident and they're resilient. And it's teaching those skills um, within within all of the areas of learning to get them ready for when they move up to key stage one when they move up to year one the next year um with, with any early year setting we follow the early years framework so that's made up of 17 aspects of learning within seven areas of learning so like i said earlier it's there's the ones that you'd expect such as literacy reading and writing and mathematics, which is numbers, shape, space, and measure. There's also other elements as well. There's other areas that are really important that we give children the opportunities to develop that whole child. So that child who is confident with their communication and language skills, also confident with expressing themselves and, and showing their creativity. Um, so throughout the year, the, the, the teachers that your child is assigned to will talk, talk to you about these areas of learning if your child's on track, or if they're not, what we can do to support. And at the end of the academic year, you'll 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 receive um, and um, you'll receive a report which which lets you know how well your child has done within those areas um, of learning. And, and and what we look at is with all those with all those areas together is if your child's received a good level of development. But as I said, we'll we'll, we'll keep talking to you throughout the year of what that looks like. At Fielding, we, we understand the importance of play, especially with children within the early year setting. Um, that's how children learn. So children make progress when they get to those high levels of engagement. And you can, you can achieve that with four and five year olds um, through play. And um, so that's very much the, the approach that we take with our early years at Fielding. So we teach through play. So we still have our sessions on the carpet, but then we let the children go and explore the world. We let them go and, and take risks within that safe environment. Um, we let them explore that through the indoor classroom and also the outdoor classroom. So what does a typical week look like for your child in school? And I think this will be a lovely one just so you can sit down um, during the summer break and you can talk to your child about these. Um, like I said, we'll have maths and literacy sessions. We have those daily. Um, but also then we break off into small group sessions so we can really work with your children at their starting points and move them on accordingly. We have daily phonics lessons, so there is that importance of early reading at Fielding, and then coming back to that play. So alongside all those um, carpet sessions that we have with your children teaching those new skills, we let them go and embed those and explore those in the inside classroom and outside classroom. At any point if your child is, is struggling in a certain area, we'll identify those needs and we'll work with you. And, um, and, and, and with adults in school to, to offer interventions for your, for your children. That includes also children coming into us who English isn't their first language. So our EAL children, English is an additional language. And we'll make sure that we have pre-teaching sessions and sessions really to, to support the, the understanding of that, that basic language, but also then that academic language. So what makes, what makes Fielding unique? Um, we're really lucky at Fielding because we have our own forest area. So this has been up and running now for three years and um, we have a forest school lead within reception and um, we plan weekly lessons. So this happens from nursery um, through early years and the children get to go and they get to experience the world and they get to look at the changes during the seasons. Um, but just that, just that additional opportunity for the children to, to develop that love through learning and through play. Um, as we've mentioned already, um, once a week we have um, specialist music, French and PE sessions, and we understand that it's important that we get to those high levels of engagement 
um, from making learning exciting for children. So we have celebration days throughout the year, such as World Book Day. Also one of our topics is space. We have a space theme day where your children can come dressed as an astronaut or a planet. And it's, it's, that, it's that time to really reflect on the achievements they've made during that challenge. And also we have the fairy tale ball and also those gold moments. So again, it's creating those memories. So the urban zoo comes in and the children get to, if they want to, um, touch the animals and talk about them, and, but just those hands-on experiences. And um, so, so, so they leave reception and they, they move up to year one and, and, and they, can, they can relate their learning to those first hand experiences. Okay, so starting to think now about um, some of those more structured sessions that your children will have. And you may have heard me talk to you before about um, reading and uh, teaching your child to read is, is the biggest gift that we can give to any child. Um, so we will teach your child to read um, and we'll do that in, in two ways. So we will um, um, introduce your children to linking letters and sounds. We know that some children might come to school already already knowing some of their sounds, um, but we will go through a structured program and we'll start that um, as soon as the children join with us. Um, then we move through a scheme called Read Write Inc, which is a, a published scheme that we use to teach reading. It's, um, it's well known um, and it has great results. Um, so you will be part of that. Um, when they'll have their sessions in school and then they will take home some books um, that they've read in school and also an unknown text, which still has the sounds that they're learning. So you can help them on their journey to being a reader. But alongside that, um, we'll also teach them um, to develop a love of reading. So teachers in reception will read to the children at least once a, a day, perhaps some of those familiar stories that children already know and love, um, and they'll get to read them um, themselves and again, bring those home to share together with you. Um, so it's a very structured approach to teaching reading through the Read, Write, Ink phonics scheme and those familiar stories, but making sure that we're building children's understanding of text and ability to read text at the same time. So they are in a really good place for when they go into year one. Alongside those structured sessions, um, children will just be immersed in lots of reading material through the classroom. So we have a reading corner, we have role play areas where the children are asked to read things such as um, if the role player is set up as a restaurant, for instance, they'll be reading menus, or if it's set up as a vet surgery, they'll be looking at what, what they need to be doing to look after their animals. And there's just lots and lots of books in the corridors and in the classrooms that the children can look through together and share. Um, we will give you a gift of a book bag to keep those books nice and um, nice and clean and tidy uh, and ready to bring them back to school, um, but also so they can take those books from the classroom home and share those with you. That's really important to us. Um, we, we have regular um, updates around where the children are at with their learning their sounds so um, at least um, twice a term the children will um, will the teacher will assess the children to make sure that they are making good progress with learning their sounds and if any of the children fall behind they're given being given an opportunity to catch up um, with their peers so that they are on track to, um, to um, to know all of the sounds they need to know before they finish the reception year. And if you want some more information about um, which sounds children are learning and when, um, on our website, we, we, sh we show our, uh, what's called our phonics progression map, which will show you um, what sounds the children need to learn. We know that some of our children started to um, link letters and sounds in nursery, those who are joining us from nursery. Um, so all of the, the information that we have um, for, the, for those children will be passed on from our nursery teachers to our reception teachers. Um, and we know that some children will come into school and that perhaps haven't been to a nursery before, have been to a different nursery, um, or may, might have learnt sounds in a different way. Um, and we have um, a clear plan in place to make sure that those children get the opportunity to learn letters and sounds at the same rates as the other children. Okay, um, looking at maths within early years, um, very much like all the other areas, we have those, those daily sessions when, when we can look at the skills. So we usually look at, at a, a certain skill with over a day, um, over a week, sorry, or, or, or two weeks and we have those carpet sessions, but then again, we, we go off and we look at those skills for at play. Um, Clay was given some examples with the, with the reading, but very much similar with, with, with mathematics. So if a child's playing in the construction area during choosing time, you're bringing up that language of, of number throughout that. So there will be plenty of opportunities for children to develop those skills. And we've already talked about the character Percy Progress. So he's used weekly as well. So the children can reflect on the learning, but also think about their next steps. And what we usually do is we, we put in place mass drop-ins. So if there's a certain area that your child's struggling 
um, then we we do we, we do mass drop-ins and so that will be in-house or virtually just so you've got that additional support from us as well moving on to writing um, so likewise with the, the the reading that we've talked about we want your children to develop the skills to be confident and excited to write we use many techniques um, within our within our reception one of them is helicopter stories which is a lovely way when children get to write their own ideas bring out their own creativity but they then turn that into um, a piece of writing that they can act out with their friends um, and also we use a story scribing um, strategy when we write with the children but eventually ease back when they become more confident with writing and, and we, we find that works really well for us and moving children on it's really important that children understand that writing is a form of communication. So again, we write within the play. So if you've got children in the role play corner, um, for example, playing with, um, I don't know, some dolls, and they put the dolls to sleep, they can, um, to bed, and they don't want anyone to wake them up, they might communicate that they want to write a sign to the class. So it, it, it's really forming that link so children understand that writing is for a purpose. Um, things to look out for, again, we um, we do workshops, and um, so, We'll be offering in-house or virtual workshops again just to get to grips with those things that we've talked about helicopter stories story scribing and also like the maths we will offer um, drop-in sessions again just if we identify that there's an area that your, your child might be struggling in or need a little bit more support we can put that support in place for you we will also have uh, some drop-in sessions for phonics there, um, included uh, with the writing as well, and also some workshops, just so if you're not familiar with phonics or how children link letters and sounds, and you're not sure how to um, help your child at home, then our phonics leader will have be running some sessions, um, either in school or virtually, depending on the social distancing measures that are in place, so do look out for those. We, um, throughout the day, we try to make every, um, every session that the children are here with us at school into a learning session. So one of those is lunchtime. So the adults who the children are familiar with, so the class teachers and the early year specialists, um, they, they actually sit with the children during lunchtime and they use that time to just to get to know the children a bit better, um, to teach them about social skills and those, you know, using knives and forks properly. So thinking about their fine motor skills there and, and you know, sharing new tastes and, and trying new foods together and we do that through our family style dining which we do for our youngest children so the children sit in groups of um, between eight and ten around a table the food is served in the middle of the table and then the children will get used to um, serving each other their food and it's just a really lovely time to get to know the children in a slightly different way so it's outside the classroom but still with the familiar adults so they feel really safe in doing that so we have um, our Harrison catering team on site. So they, they um, freshly cook all the meals each day. Um, they bake their own bread um, and that's all done in the kitchen here on site. So Harrison staff can meet all dietary needs. So if your child does have um, an, a food allergy or a dietary need, um, then do let us know. Again, on our website, there is a section about school dinners and there is a form there for you to complete. So if you do need to let us know about the dietary needs, complete that, return it to school, and then we will arrange arrange a meeting with the caterer for you. Um, during that meeting, um, the caterer will go through the menus, they'll think about um, your child's dietary need, and together you will form an individual menu for your child to make sure that they, their needs are being met during lunchtime. Um, there are different options for the food each day. Um, there is a vegetarian option for the children um, if they have a vegetarian diet. And it's really useful for you to share the menu with your children so they know what to expect each day. And that's, that's published on our website as well. So it's really important for us to um, start to get to know your children just so um, so we, we, we can start to help them in that transition into starting with us um, in reception at Fielding. And if your child isn't currently at Fielding Primary School, they're not in our nursery, then you'll be receiving a call from one of our reception team over the next two weeks. And that just gives us the opportunity to touch base with you and ask you a few questions, just so we start to get um, to know your child um, before they start with us in September. If your child's already in our field and nursery, or, or, they, or, or, or they have been this year, um, then we, we work closely in the reception team to work with the nursery team for those handover meetings. So the nursery, the nursery team know your children really well, so we'll make sure that we have that, that time for them to hand over any notes um, that they might have for us.
So it's really important um, that we, we, we put lots in place to make sure that your, your child is settled and happy um, with their new setting, so their new reception setting with us. Um, we know this can be an anxious time for parents, but also for children. So, so we, we worked hard to make sure that we get this right. Um, so we, we offer a st soft start. So that's across the school, but in reception is the opportunity for you actually um, subject to social distancing. We'll see what, where we are in September for you to come into the classroom and spend that 15 minutes with your child to settle them down, to see the, the activities that we've put in place but for also for you guys to get that idea of, of, of what's happening and what reception life looks like for your child. And that's worked really well over the last couple of years of, of making children feel more at ease about their setting. Um, we're really lucky because you will collect your children and drop them off at the class door. So you've got that, 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 that daily opportunity to talk to us about any concerns or any questions that you might have. And, um, and also lunchtime. So thinking about lunchtimes, we've already talked about family school dining, but what happens when the children finish their lunch? Um, well, we make sure that they come back to our reception playground so that they're familiar with the setting and then not surrounded at this point with the older children, um, but just so they've got that, that, that calm space that they can play after lunch. Um, we've already talked about that values-based ethos, so that's very much part of our curriculum in reception that really supports the children with that transition. And then throughout the day, and um, throughout the year, sorry, um, we offer stay and play sessions. So again, this will be subject to social distancing, um, but we, we think it's important when we can to get the parents and carers in. So again, you guys can see what's happening because I know many children will come home and say they didn't do anything at all all day, um, but it gives you that opportunity to come in and actually see um, how we um, approach our learning within reception. So getting ready for that first day, I know there'll be lots of questions about what that looks like. Um, we'll send a welcome pack um, to you all so you have some more information about uniforms. Um, but the basics are, so the uniform, um, this is key that all items are labelled and easy fastening. So as you can imagine with um, 30 children in each class, um, if you have 30 sweatshirts with no labels, that becomes a little bit tricky at the end of the day when we're trying to match those up to children. Um, we have a signed P day each week and your children get to um, put their P kit on before school and wear that to school and they stay that, stay in their P kit um, throughout the day. Um, in your child's school bag you'll have the reading folder that um, Claire's already talked about so that's a gift from Field and so that will, will come in and that will have their, their school books in but also a labelled water bottle and a fruit container. We do offer a, a school snack, in the <coughs> morning, um, but you might want your child to also have a, a fruit snack in the afternoon, so that can come in in a, in a labelled container. Um, spare sets of clothes, as we talked about, we have our, we have our outside area, um, we have our sand pit, and we have our water, um, we have our river, and the children will get messy, and that's all about that, that that's allowing them to have the opportunities to explore the world through play. Um, so it's important that you have that spare set of clothes so children can change if they need to. And also if you know that your child might have the occasional toilet accident, you've got that spare set of clothes that your child can change into if needed. We've talked about field and forest, so we have that once a week. Um, we use that in all seasons, so there will be um, periods when it is a little bit muddy or a little bit wet. So we encourage you to bring in Wellington boots for your children. They can go home weekly or they can stay in school. That's a decision that you guys can make. Um, and then there are lots of clubs that will be on offer um, for all children in school, but reception, they've, they've got their own set of clubs. And if you decide to do something such as ballet um, or rugby, they can bring their pee bag in on those club days and they'll have opportunity to change before the club happens. So the coronavirus has meant that as a school, we've had to think about doing things differently. All three of us would have preferred to see you face to face for this session, uh, but we hope that this video has gone some way to introduce ourselves and our school to you. We're assuming that schools will reopen fully and normally in September, but that may change. We'll, we'll wait on a decision by government from that, but we very much hope to welcome all of our pupils and your children back to school from September as normal, and that's what we're planning for. 
Meanwhile, please look out for a welcome video from your child's new class teacher. Also look out for stories and a virtual tour from our reception team. We'll publish all of that onto our own private YouTube channel. Uh, have a look at the reception uh, year group notice board on the school's website. And then there are also a whole series of other web links that we'll be sending to you um, directly over the next uh, few weeks. So Claire, if you can move me on there. So uh, there's information around our early years, around reception, uh, lots and lots of photos that Christian uses to share with other practitioners um, on the uh, Instagram EFS world, and then uh, a long convoluted link there to um, our private YouTube channel. But we'll send this information to you separately. Uh, if you need to find out any more, then please do feel free to um, search the school's website uh, uh, or actually to drop us a quick email with any specific queries. For those of you new to fielding, look out for uh, your, your home uh, telephone uh, conversation appointment with Christian or someone in the team. But for now, uh, thank you for joining us and we look forward to uh, welcoming you face to face to school in September.